All right, guys, we're back here today uh, with Sarah Borgstead and Pastor Drew Ross. My name is AJ. Uh, thanks, guys, for being back here for our life group uh, studies. And uh, today we're going to be looking at John 8, 31 through 47. Some interesting uh, stuff going on here. Um, and some of it's confusing, too. I mean, first off, in kind of our pre-prep, we were ourselves going, let's make sure we understand who the audience is here. Yeah. Yep. I tended to, to think of Jesus, I think, when he teaches is, is he's not only teaching to, he's not only preaching to the choir. I tend to think that when mm-hmm. Jesus is teaching, he's teaching to a, a body of people. And in this case, from what we know from verse 31, there must also include to the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus speaks up. But my, my guess here is that there's a whole host of people here, probably all of Jewish descent, mm-hmm. right? Probably there's sure. a big host of, of Jews that are here. That's why as we look through and it references, we're, we're the sons of Abraham. That's why, we, that's why they're able to say that. But my guess is there, there are some that are Jews who believe and probably a host of other people who are just Jews who are there. Yeah, people all over yeah. the spectrum kind of. Yeah, right? yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great. So, you know, what hit you guys here? Well, definitely, um, verse 33, it says, we are Abraham's descendants and we have never been slaves of anyone. Mm. So right away, that struck me as ironic <laughs> and um, the people uh, were oppressed at yeah. this time, right? Maybe you can yeah. speak to that a little more fully, but um, it, it, to me it just seemed really ironic that they were not free, and well, yet they're saying this. Well, the Jews tended to celebrate their history, and they would align them. That's why they're pointing back to, to Abraham. Remember, this is, this is the gospel writer John that's writing about this. So we're talking about this now, life of Jesus, after life of Jesus time. This is being written and referred to, but yet they're claiming their, their father being back at Abraham. Mm-hmm. So they're referring to, I mean, we're, we're talking about possibly 4,000 mm-hmm. years that they're referring to before this moment. So they celebrate their history. They're also forgetting that, wait, get, your ancestors were slaves, yeah. right? They, they actually were. They were most definitely slaves. And maybe they're celebrating, we're no, we're no longer slaves mm-hmm. to anybody or anything. But you know what, <laughs> what I appreciated from Age when we were talking before, he said, wait a minute, but worse than slaves, you're now slaves to sin. Right. You know, pick up on that. You're slaves to something that's even worse than being a slave to, to a nation. Here's something else that I picked up on here is that in verses 31 and 32, that never refers to them. Jesus never calls them slaves. Jesus mm-hmm. says that when you hear from me, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And they're saying, free? Wait, but I'm not unfree. Yeah. So wait, you're referring to me as a slave. So they're making this jump because they're mm-hmm. sensitive Jesus says, I will, the truth will set you free. That means I must be in bondage to something. I'm not in bondage to anybody. I came out of that, right? When my people came out of that, Jesus is saying, wait, 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 wait. Sinfulness, folks. Yeah. Sinfulness, you're enslaved to sin. Yeah, I was surprised that John didn't insert, and Jesus laughed for a full minute. Yeah, there, right, you know, right, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, like you said, uh, beyond being slaves in Egypt and kind of slaves of the Romans, uh, the real problem here is sin. And, um, you know, they don't even realize they have a problem. Yeah. They react negatively to, to being set free uh-huh. to that language. Yeah, and to be shown your sin in this, in this instance. I mean, remember, during the Gospels, this is also when Pharisees were present. Mm-hmm. People wanted to be like the Pharisees because the Pharisees had their 600, what was it, 623 laws or rules, whatever it is. And so their sins at this point, they're tracking them. They're mm-hmm. keeping track of their, they're counting them up, and I want to look good. So now you're referring to me as being a slave to sin? Ugh, that's the worst. Yeah, it's interesting. They look to, um, you know, the religious leaders, particularly even the Pharisees, right, as, you know, these are the Navy SEALs of being religious. <laughs> you know, yeah. there's, there's the Delta yeah, right. Force of spirituality. Oh, and um, yet Jesus is kind of alluding to here, um, you know what, if you followed my father, you would act a certain way. Yep. but your actions don't line up. Mm-hmm. Um, and it reminds me of, of kind of the, the metaphor elsewhere in Scripture and even later in John, uh, you know, that the fruit metaphor is, you know, kind of a good tree, but by it bears uh-huh. fruit. You'll know a good uh-huh. disciple because uh, they do the works uh, that their, their rabbi teaches them to do. Mm-hmm. And Jesus is saying, hey, you guys are out of alignment here. Yeah. And Jesus um, does refer to them here as being descendants of Abraham, even on to, on to what is it, verse 39 that even says that, or is it even before? Oh, no, it's, it is before. It's verse 37. He refers to them as descendants. By the time you get to verse 39, they're saying it again, Abraham is our father. Finally, in verse 39, Jesus doesn't even recognize them as being sons of Abraham. 
Mm-hmm. He'll only acknowledge the fact that they are descendants of. He says, because if you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do the things that Abraham did. Yep. So they keep saying, we are descendants of Abraham. Abraham is our father. And Jesus said, descendants, yes. But if he's your father, you're going to do the will of him. You're going to at least behave like him. You're mm-hmm. not even behaving like Abraham. Yeah, it's not about biology. It's about faith. All right, all right, you know? all right yeah. So I think this is where I really come back around when I start thinking about how can I apply this in mm-hmm. my own life. Mm-hmm. Um, here you have a people who are relying on something that Jesus is saying, you can't just rely on that. You need to rely on me. Yeah. And you're sinful. And um, if you want to be set free and then you need to recognize that you aren't free, I start thinking about those things in my own life. Mm -hmm. So um, what am I relying on? Yeah, sure. Instead of relying on Jesus, and I think that's a great thing to Mm -hmm. um, think about. And um, in what ways am I trapped in my sinfulness that I'm not recognizing? Um, You know, and I think that's something that a lot of people can think about, you know, what addictions, what habits, what, you know, gossip or, um, you know, relationships or those types of things that I need to be looking to Jesus for freedom. I think this is a great passage for us not to just say, oh, those Jewish people, they were really screwed up, but to look at myself and Mm -hmm. where am I doing that to? Yeah, sure. Yeah, what am I relying on instead of my father? Mm -hmm. Our father. Exactly. Sure, Mm -hmm. sure. And anytime there's a discrepancy between uh, you know, what God is saying and, and what's in our lives, it should be a moment of repentance. Right. right? Turning from, uh, you know, the acts of the flesh uh, toward God and saying, I desire to follow you and really be your disciple. Yeah, and, yeah, and it seems me. to be that here that they continue to fight that. So I'm thinking of 47, you know, he who belongs to God hears what God says. Huh. You know, I think that's a question that people want to ask. They'll probably want to talk about it in their groups even today is, how do you know that it's the Father that's speaking to you? Right? How do you know that God is the one speaking to you? And I think that one of the greatest ways, though, to pursue this is the same for the Jews then as what it is for us today. God's desire for you is always consistent with Scripture. Therefore, what you surround yourself with is going to form your answer and what you're hearing God say. So, therefore, what I'm saying is this. If you surround yourself with Scripture and we, we have our devotion time, you have your reading time, eventually your thoughts begin to align with the rest of Scripture. Mm-hmm. However, if we find that our daily life is absent of Scripture, our, even though we desire to, to, to discover what the will of God is, our outside influence will not be Scripture. It's going to be whatever it is that we've let into our ears. Sure. So if I sit around every single morning and I watch The View, <laughs> I'm picking on the view because it's easy to do. If I sit around in the morning and I, and I listen to the view, but yet I decide, try to dis, de, uh, decipher what God's will is, I probably actually have Whoopi Goldberg in my ear more than I have King David or Solomon or the apostles or Paul, mm-hmm. etc. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I was thinking the exact same thing. The answer is in verse 32. Mm. Then you will know the truth, okay. and the truth will set you th- free. The yeah. truth is God's word. Yeah. And we read it, we study it, we memorize it, um, we hear it from other Christians yeah. who surround us, um, you know, having Christian mentors coming to worship. The more that um, we just are constantly surrounding ourselves with the truth, hearing it over and over and over, the more, um, the more like you said, that... Um, guides us, helps us. Um, yeah, shapes us, yeah. Yeah, exactly, and yeah. that just is so helpful in our everyday life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so as we let people go from here to, to ponder this passage, I think one of the things I would, would like people to think about is, um, you know, it, the people at the time of Jesus, they missed it. And maybe yeah. have some discussion around why did some of those pe- people miss it? Yeah. Um, you know, because they thought they, thought they were nailing it all publicly, you yeah. know, and, and they trusted in, in a lot of these things that ended up not being able to deliver yeah. for them. And, and likewise, um, what are ways in which we can do a reality check uh, for us? Yeah. You know? I think what, what clouds our ears so that we cannot decipher God's will? Mm-hmm. Or what is it that has fogged our minds that causes us to be unwilling sometimes to repent? 